Hello, welcome to my speedy first look preview of Star Wars Outlaws. <sighs> we made it. <laughs> Before we get started, I just want to say a huge thanks to Ubisoft and Intel for granting me early access to a galaxy far, far away. I playtested the game on my Intel 14th gen powered PC for about four hours earlier this month and can confirm my allegiance to the Intel Gaming Alliance, no matter how many crime syndicates I dabbled with during my playtest. Without further ado, let's hyperspace jump in. Let me see some identification. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Your Torn Valerio Nup? That's me. Mm -hmm. As part of All the right. playtest, I spent nearly three hours in the world of Tashara, meeting, greeting, and cheating the Pike Syndicate, Crimson Dawn Gang, and Hot Cartel. What? You never make new friends? Before jumping on my Trailblazer spaceship and dabbling in dogfighting. I then got to visit some mafioso-run hot springs on the ice-cold planet of Kamiji, where wellness was not on the menu. I didn't spend enough with each to decide who I would probably want to invite over for a weekend barbecue, but really the game wants you to decide whose loyalty to court and whose patience you're willing to test in order to gain secrets and access territory. People like me don't pay people like you. Oh, yeah? Hmm. <laughs> Good to know. You'll know this by now, but in Star Wars Outlaws, you'll be playing as lovable Bandit K. You have a psychic coordinate <laughs> who will passively aggressively face hug the hell out of your enemies so you can melee or shoot them with your blaster. In other words, it's up to you to finish the job because we don't corrupt adorable little psychic critters around here. If pickpocketing is considered a victimless crime, that is. See what they've got. Nyx is a really fun part of the game. He will grab healing stims, distract enemies, pick up nades, weapons, and collectibles for you, even in the heat of battle. He'll corrupt alarms and other environmental electricals and provide emotional support when a checkpoint reload lands you slap bang in the middle of gang warfare. It's gonna be okay, buddy. Physical movement in this game looks and feels really good, although at times the stealth felt a little unforgiving for my clumsy little hands. Hey, what's back there? Big shots only. Listen, buddy, I'm from Kanto, and I'm like the biggest shot there. <laughs> <laughs> get lost. Kay herself is hilariously braggadocious. She will try and give it the big I am to get past doormen and fail miserably. It shows signs that the character will develop across the duration of the game. You'll need to make choices as to which crime syndicate to align with during play, but don't expect any RPG style jumps to the dark side. Not that I have any insight whatsoever as to whether our plucky heroine will get a choice to usurp and become more evil than Yab and the Hutt, but I think popping on a fetching dark robe and building a Death Star is not a character choice. You got an eye on blaster? I need someone to hit a stash for me, but you'll need one to get inside. I can mod my blaster. Been doing it for years, just need the parts. What you are given choices in, however, is how you develop your character's abilities and loadout. Upgrading and adapting your handy blaster to do more than simply pew pew is achieved hey, through the usual collecting or buying of parts and then subsequent oh, yes. workbench tinkering. I heard you were coming. Making K more multi-skill can be achieved through completing actions during missions. For example, performing five melee takedowns. After all, practice makes skill points, if skill points were spent on your behalf. The ability trees are inspired by so-called experts, i.e. complete an in-game checklist to become better at cantina brawling on the bartender expert path. To be honest, as someone who likes to be a bit more streamlined with this sort of thing, it's got my vote as potentially I'm going to end up upskilling based on the way I naturally play the game, especially as the equipment customization is far more manually adaptable to the way you want to play. If you want to intentionally develop a particular skill further, the abilities menu tells you the checklist you'll need to tick off. It's clean, it's easy. It gets a thumbs up from me. Combat-wise, there's an emphasis on environmental stealth. Lots of cover, vents, grappling, and climbing. Stuck in an area, you probably need to look up and see what the game wants you Whoa. to grapple onto. Uh, watch your step next. Need to ascend or descend? The game won't always tell you that that grid on the wall can be climbed. I know this kind of in-game design language has been debated a lot recently, and those who hate splashes of telltale yellow and white paint should be fairly satisfied. There is a little bit, but I definitely found myself circling around areas looking for where to go. That's also due to the lack of minimap. In Star Wars Outlaws, you'll need to use an on-screen compass to find your way or keep flicking the full screen 2D map on for reference, which can sometimes interrupt the pace of your play. If you prefer to play on mouse and keyboard like me, don't make my mistake and try and use your mouse to direct your speeder bike. Direction keys will suffice. 
I must have had my playtest the guide giggling behind their mute button when I first jumped and repeatedly bumped into the game. Dog fighting was also a bit difficult for me. It's never quite been my comfort zone and I think latency from the remote play that we were doing stopped me from truly locking onto targets at times, but I think fans of the genre will probably be satisfied. You can roll and missile and blast away during fights in space, and the environment's beautiful, even if you are at times essentially navigating a massive gravity-free space junkyard. Whoa. <laughs> Check out the ship, Nix. Walker's been busy. Honestly, I've been thinking about the game since the player test, and I am really keen to jump back in again as soon as I can. I have not seen the vastness of the Star Wars Outlaws Galaxy, but given that open world games can sometimes intimidate me with their time sick nature, I was actually able to balance out some reputation building moments with the main quest. So, completionists, but also push with time enthusiasts or like expecting mums like me should find satisfaction in the game's universe. So I think it's definitely worth a look when the game becomes available to all at the end of August. Although I have a newborn then, so hopefully they like napping. <laughs> Thank you so much to Ubisoft again for allowing me access to the playtest and also to Intel. I'm part of the Intel Gaming Alliance. I've been sponsoring me since 2019 and I got to jump into the playtest because of them and their support. And the making of this video was powered by the Intel 14th Gen.